Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. My name is Julie and I'm a corporate historian. At every video, I tell a story about a different vintage consumer product. And today's video is about one of the most well-known brands in the United States, Johnson & Johnson's Band-Aid. Since its introduction in the 1920s, Band-Aid has become synonymous with all adhesive bandages. And the term Band-Aid has actually taken on a secondary definition as a temporary or makeshift solution to a problem. Today we'll look at the origins of Band-Aid, how it came to dominate the adhesive bandages industry, a surprising competitor in the 1950s, and how the brand has changed today. And just to note, Johnson & Johnson is generally very protective of the Band-Aid trademark, so much so that they actually changed their iconic I am stuck on Band-Aid because Band-Aid stuck on me jingle to I am stuck on Band-Aid brand because Band-Aid stuck on me. Technically, the full name is Band-Aid brand adhesive bandages. But for the purposes of this video, I will just be saying Band-Aid or Band-Aids just to keep things simple. Band-Aid was invented by a Johnson & Johnson cotton dealer named Earl Dixon in 1920. The idea was, at first, a simple solution to a personal problem. Dixon's wife, Josephine, was prone to accidents in the kitchen. At the time, tending to cuts and burns was a complicated process involving cotton gauze and tape and often required the assistance of a second person. But Dixon had an idea. What if he could create a ready-to-use bandage? Dixon recalled, I was determined to devise some manner of bandage which would stay in place, be easily applied, and still retain its sterility. He placed little pieces of cotton gauze on a strip of surgical tape and covered it with crinoline. Now, whenever Josephine needed a bandage, she could apply one herself. Dixon mentioned his invention to another Johnson & Johnson employee who encouraged him to share his idea of the company's management. Johnson & Johnson was immediately interested and began selling Dixon's bandages under the brand name Band-Aid. According to a 1957 article from the Central New Jersey Home News, the name Band-Aid came from W.J. Kenyon, the superintendent of Johnson & Johnson's plaster mill, where all the company's adhesive products were manufactured. At first, Band-Aids were manufactured by hand, but by 1924, Johnson & Johnson had developed a machine that could mass-produce the adhesive bandages. Advertised as the instant first aid bandage, early Band-Aids looked a little bit different from what we see today. Much like Earl Dixon's prototype, Band-Aids came in strips that you would then cut. You would then apply an antiseptic to the gauze pad. These reportedly did not sell well. It wasn't until Johnson & Johnson introduced a pre-cut version in 1924 that sales grew. As for applying an antiseptic, the company introduced a sterile version in 1938, and the company began using glassine wrappers with a tear string for opening. Johnson & Johnson made several shrewd marketing decisions to help promote Band-Aid. They placed Band-Aids in first aid kits for the Boy Scouts of America, introducing thousands of young children and, of course, their parents, to the easy-to-use bandage. The company also collaborated with the Little Golden Book series to publish Dr. Dan the Bandage Man, which included six junior Band-Aid bandages. The book showed children how to administer first aid using Band-Aids and was hugely popular. The first press run was 1.6 million copies, the largest for a little golden book at the time. The book capitalized on a growing sentiment among children. Band-Aids were fun, whether you had a cut or not. These marketing strategies helped transform Band-Aid into a multi-million dollar product, popular around the world. After decades as the undisputed market leader in adhesive bandages, Band-Aid found itself with a surprising new competitor in the 1950s, Curad. 
Kirin bandages were developed for military use by the Kendall Company during the Korean War. Made with a perforated plastic surface and pad called tefla, Kirin bandages allowed wounds to drain but wouldn't stick to the scab, eliminating the painful possibility of reopening a cut when you remove the bandage. Kirin tefla bandages were embraced by hospitals but were not so quickly adopted for ordinary household use where band-aid dominated. But two marketing efforts would make the upstart Kyreds Band-Aid's leading competitor for decades. In early 1956, Kyred introduced a series of colorful bandages called Battle Ribbons. Available in colors red, green, blue, and yellow, Battle Ribbons appealed to children who could decorate themselves with bandages and appealed to teenagers and adults who could coordinate their bandages with their outfits. Battle Ribbons notably also featured a wrapper that was removed by pulling apart two tabs, a feature that would ultimately become the industry standard. Later that same year, Johnson & Johnson introduced colorfully designed band-aid stars and strips, indicative of Kirad's Battle Ribbon success. Now, Kirad also spent the 1950s unsuccessfully trying to convince consumers that their Tefla pad technology was superior because it didn't stick to cuts and wounds. Ads that called Tefla the mercy dressing didn't stick with consumers. Then, in 1965, Kirad finally reached consumers with one word. Ouchless. For the first time, having a bandage be ouchless and not stick to the wound became important to consumers. Battle ribbons and ouchless bandages did not usurp Band-Aid as the industry leader, but they did increase brand awareness for Kirad and strengthened its position in the marketplace and on store shelves. For the next few decades, Kirad and Band-Aid stood toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But then in the mid-1990s, Band-Aid broke away by launching a multitude of new products to meet different consumer needs, including Band-Aids with aloe vera and vitamin E, antiseptic Band-Aids, Band-Aids for sports, waterproof Band-Aids, clear Band-Aids, colorful Band-Aids, Band-Aids with Disney characters, and specially shaped Band-Aids for fingers and knuckles. With a wide variety of specialized uses, Johnson & Johnson had created a reason for consumers to have multiple boxes of different band-aids in their home. More recently, Johnson & Johnson has introduced SkinFlex, band-aids designed to stay on for 24 hours, even through hand washing, exercise, and phone scrolling and R-Tone, a line of inclusive bandages in shades of brown that better represent the diversity of consumers. Today, Johnson & Johnson retains a large share of the bandage market, and Band-Aid is the largest brand name in the industry, with $168 million in sales for 2020. In a final note, I wanted to share something interesting that I learned while working on this video. Band-Aids used to have a red string to tear the wrapper open. The concept behind the red string was simple. You'd open one end of the wrapper, pull the string, and the wrapper would tear neatly in half and the bandage would be ready to use. The goal was to minimize potential contamination of the band-aid with your hands. Unfortunately, it didn't always work as planned, reportedly leaving parents trying to open the wrapper with their teeth and nails. In 1992, Band-Aid began phasing out the red string for all of its products and used the pull-apart adhesive tabs of their competitors. It was apparently very satisfying if the string worked properly, so I found some Band-Aids with tear string wrappers and I want to see if I can successfully open a Band-Aid with one. I only have five, so five chances to get this right. Wish me luck.
would say that overall that was a success. Based on some of the articles I read, I was expecting it to be a lot more difficult to open the wrapper of the string, but it was actually pretty easy, except for the third band-aid where the string just totally fell out. Based on our very small sample size, the red string worked 80% of the time. Do you remember red string band-aids? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at over a hundred years of Band-Aid history. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the history of companies and their products, please consider giving it a like and subscribing below. And as always, if there is a vintage consumer product you'd like to hear me talk about, please let me know in the comments. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.